Hello, everybody. Welcome to Trusty Huckster Mercantiles 4S1S, four sellers, one sale. Uh, if you notice on your screen, we're missing one of our sellers. About two minutes before we were supposed to go live uh, over the years, had some technical difficulty and got disconnected. So we're waiting for him to die, uh, get himself connected back in. Hopefully that will be soon, but did not want to leave, uh, leave everyone hanging out there. So appreciate y'all joining. Uh, we've got uh, Cindy Warman is here, Suzanne McLean, excellent. Suzanne, thank you for joining us back. Uh, KCATX is here, Carolina Lady. Uh, hello, Fab's Fairy. Fab Fairy's fine. Michelle, Comfy Goes Living. Thanks for joining us, Michelle. Hope your sale went well today. Carolyn Gadles is here again. Thanks, Stacy. I uh, appreciate everyone joining today. We're going to have hopefully a fun filled evening, and we'll hopefully Tim will get in here at uh, some point. So you will have your four sellers to pick from. Uh, while we uh, wait for him to log back on, going to go through a little bit of housekeeping. Most of the names, hey, Cindy from Mimi's uh, Butterfly Nurse, hey, welcome. Uh, most of the names I'm recognizing have been in the chats uh, in sales before, but just in case, if we've got anybody new that's lurking in the background, uh, the way this is going to work, this is a sale. This is not an auction. So each one of us is going to present an item. Uh, we're going to go round robin style. We will present one item and we will describe it. We will give a price for it and we will give you the item number. The, if you're interested in the item, enter that item number into the chat. Really quick note, it's the live chat, not the comments. We are not monitoring the comments. So if you're not seeing notes from Teresa Bryant and Huckster Helper and Mama J, uh, you are in the wrong spot. So make sure you're in the chat and it's also, also good to be in the live chat instead of the top chat. Uh, so you'll be able to see all the, all the names and everything coming through. If you are the first person that we see on our end, you will claim that item. Uh, most of us, we have moderators helping us out, so they'll be watching for trolls and fun things like that, but they'll also be entering who the winner is in the chat. And if they're not doing that, at a minimum, all of us will be announcing it, uh, the winner of the item, before our next item. Recognize that if uh, we're using a program called StreamYard, there's quite a bit of a delay on it. So by the time we have somebody's uh, bidding on our item, the next person will have already started presenting. So you're gonna have to wait through an item. Hi, Tim. Uh, you're gonna have to wait through the um, presentation of the other ones to figure out if you were the winner. But we will try and announce that and also watch for it in the chat. If you are seeing numbers before you're hearing them, you're lagging. You may not know you're lagging, you may not know you're buffering, but you are. People are not omniscient. So what you'll need to do is refresh your screen. If you're on your phone, you may need to back out and uh, open YouTube again. Uh, you wanna be as fresh of an internet, and as fast of an internet you can, uh, because the first person will claim it. Uh, we will be combining our orders individually. So if you buy multiple items from me, I will combine them and provide you a, sh a shipping cost. The prices you uh, hear are do not include shipping. And what is very important for these joint sales is we are represented four different states here. So we are not combining across the four sellers. So if you buy an item from me, an item from George, an item from Ke Kelly and an item from Tim, you will get four separate shipments. There's no way we can get around that. So keep that in mind while you're bidding. I am bid uh, shipping from Chicago. And then as the others do their introduction, they can talk about where they're shipping from. So if you're on the other side of the country from some people, just again, keep that in mind. Uh, pretty much everything else is relatively straightforward. Uh, if you watch our individual uh, names come across, please make sure um, you uh, follow all of our pages uh, or all of our YouTube channels. All of us are also on Instagram. You can follow us on Instagram. And if we treat Tim really nicely, he may actually start doing sales on his own. So make sure you follow Tim. If you like what he's got to offer, uh, make sure you're starting to follow him as well. Uh, so really just quick, I just had a request. Um, uh, George, the antique nomad, he will be shipping from Kentucky. Uh, Tim from over the years is shipping from DC and Kelly from a Moss Stone Story Vintage is shipping from uh, Michigan, from Detroit. So that is where we're all coming from. So we're kind of spread out a little bit, three somewhat Midwest and then one on the more on the East Coast. Hopefully you've got good enough stuff. You're just gonna want it no matter where it's coming from. Hey Katie, Vintage and Vinyl. So we're gonna go ahead and get things, uh, kick things off. Uh, since Tim is here, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it on to him and let him present the first item. All right. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Tim. I'm from over the years. I'm a full-time reseller, six different platforms. Um, so I brought a wide range of things for everybody tonight. If anybody has any questions as I'm showing them, please don't hesitate to ask. 
So, the first item we are going to do is, this is a Boyd Pink Opalescent Glass Swan. I believe it's a swan. I guess it could be a duck, but it's a Pink Opalescent Glass by Boyd. Um, it is a salt dip, and it has the Boyd marking on the inside of the glass, um, and no chips dings or cracks but yes this is a really beautiful piece um as you when you hold it in the light you know it really goes through that opalescent glass really nice so this is going to be the first one if you would like this pink opalescent boyd glass salt dip for nine dollars give me number 63 Uh, all right. Okay. And Tim will pass it over to George. Well, hey, everybody. I'm George the Antique Nomad, and I have tried to bring a selection of items tonight that if you don't have the good fortune to win the particular item I'm showing, I do have similar items in the same vein. So don't hesitate to email me if you miss out on one thing. I might have something else you like. I'm going to start with this piece. This is a child's plate. This is Little Bo Peep. And it's luster wear. A lot of us think luster is a 1930s thing, but this is actually uh, Bavarian luster wear. This is going to date earlier. This is going to be from about 1920, and it's got little bow peep. It's about six inches. It's got the poem. It's transfer wear, so it's got the bucket, the cat, the child playing, and the lamb and the sheep. And I thought it was pretty cute, and maybe one of you will too. It is $9, and it is number $35, $9 for the Little Bo Peep plate. So I'm Kelly from Mosto Story Vintage, and I am just outside of Detroit, so I will be shipping from Michigan. And I have a very shabby chic farmhouse decor piece for the first round. Um, I have this vintage Polish, Three Little Pigs Nesting Dolls. This is the largest of the nesting doll. And inside will be the medium pig, as well as the baby pig. The baby pig does not have a nose though. So they're a little rough, but they're really, really cute. They'd be adorable in a uh, child's bedroom. So just, I was thinking kind of farmhousey. So that is that. So hand painted Polish nesting dolls. And I am asking $16. And that is item number seven. All right, we'll pass it to me. And I apologize to Kelly. I forgot to change her uh, banner. So if you bought from Kelly, do not send the email to uh, uh, Antique Nomad. <laughs> so this is, uh, again, Patrick, trusty huckster mercantile. And let's see, do I even have a banner? Yes, I do. So we're going to try, I'm trying to multitask. My huckster helper is not in the room. So uh, you you get me out by myself. My first item is a small uh, bleak, what it, somewhat of a, a ewer shape, but I do believe it's the creamer. Uh, this is one of the cases that uh, for those of you who are not familiar with my channel and maybe some of the other channels that we have, we've got quite the research team uh, tonight. All of us love just, we love doing the research side of things. So this was one of the pieces that I had some fun doing a little bit of research that this one is the fifth mark, the second green mark from Belique. And the pattern, try and get a close up there of the pattern, I uh, could not get a consensus on what that pattern was until, again, did a little bit of research and found it was the Rathmore pattern. It's just a very sweet looking uh, small picture. This is the type of Belique that I'm used to seeing. I really started researching Belique in the 90s, and this was the vintage stuff uh, that they were promoting that they had for sale at that time because the third mark or the uh, fifth mark is from 1955 to 1965. I'm selling this Rathmore creamer for $8. You can have it by giving me number 83. Number 83, $8 for the Rathmore creamer. And I'll pass to Tim. All right. That's a beautiful creamer, by the way. 
Okay, so next item is going to be a planter. Perfect for a nursery, perfect gift for a expecting mother and father. So this is a nursery planter right here. So it has A, B, and C all the way around. It's got a nice little cute teddy bear holding balloons. There's the inside. And it still has the Napco, I don't know if you can see it, the Napco sticker on there. Uh, so this is a vintage Napco nursery block planter. And for $10, Number 59. Okay, so we're supposed to announce who won, and the winner of the Little Bo Peep oh. is Lynn Johnson. So I just wanted to let you know, number 35, Lynn Johnson, that piece is yours. And if you'll send an email, we'll get that processed for you. The next item I have is a 1950s rooster, and of course people really enjoy collecting roosters from the 50s. What's neat about this one to me is it's got a very good label. It's a small California company called Starnes, and Starnes was one of the many potteries that formed during the Second World War in California and produced into the 50s before the Marshall Plan came. I think you can see it better that way. And then when we did the Marshall Plan, the German and Japanese companies formed again, and a lot of these little things ended up being made offshore. So they didn't make these long. He's got a lot of little holes in him. You could use him as a muffineer if you wanted to close the bottom, but really he was made as an hors d'oeuvres holder. That was a popular thing to do in the 50s. You'd put little cheeses and meats on and put the toothpicks in, and there it'd be in the back of his tail. And the Starnes rooster is number... $31,317 for the Starnes Rooster, number 31. Okay, the next item I have is a set of two darling three-dimensionally bossed Odagiri mugs from the late 70s, early 80s. They do not have their markings on them, but I can tell you that it was probably a sticker and it is Odagiri. One's a little darker than the other, but they are just so sweet. And it looks like bark on the back of them as well. So those two mocks, I am asking $12. And that is item number 11. All right, we bring it back to me. Uh, my second item is actually going to be a piece of jewelry because I want to use this also to promote uh, my, I do sales every week and uh, my sale next week, which will be again on Thursday at the same time, but it'll be a solo show, not a group show like this. Uh, my show next week will be a themed show and it will be all vintage jewelry. So I wanted to throw a little sneak peek, throw one piece into this sale and as far as I'm concerned, this ends up being the definition of the 70s. It's got the fringe. It's got the movement. It's got the disco dancing all over it. And uh, it's just a really attractive piece. It is not signed. And it is just gold tone. Unfortunately, and you can see a little bit on the close-up, it needs a little bit of uh, attention from a um, jewelry cleaner. Uh, because it's got it the way it was folded up or the way it was uh, stored there's a little bit of oxidation that i was able to flake off some of it but i since i don't normally handle jewelry i didn't really have uh, anything that i knew how to clean this up so this is going to have to be a little bit of uh, some elbow grease going into it but i tried to price it accordingly but before i do that before i forget uh the winner of the a person who claimed the bleak creamer was connie cable so congratulations uh that was number 83 the bleak creamer went to connie cable this item is $8, and you can have the disco fringe necklace for $8 by giving me number 80. Number 80, $8 for the fringe necklace. All right. So the winner of the Boyd Swan on Nest salt dip was Suzanne McLean. So congratulations to her. Uh, my next item is going to be a piece of Fenton. If you watch our channel, you know I'm a big fan of Fenton glass from the early stuff all the way to the newer stuff. Um, so here we have a Fenton blue satin custard glass boot. Um, and the pattern on there is kind of difficult to see. Is the daisy and button pattern on that boot. Um, it is in really nice condition. It's a really nice piece. 
The only flaw is there's a little flake right there on the edge. I don't think you can even see it, but I just wanted to let you guys know about that. So, yes, the Fenton Blue Satin Custard Glass Daisy and Button Pattern Boot is $9. And the number is 65 Okay. Hey there. Okay. I got to wake up. Um, the winner of number 31, the Starnes Rooster was Slick Hendrix 941. So if you'll email me, you won that for $7. Thank you very much. And I wanted to show something. I have to admit, I was inspired by Tim and Patrick's deep dive. And I always like this stuff anyway. I always just thought of it as green depression glass, but they talked about uranium glass. So I thought I should bring a 1930s depression glass pitcher. It's got the diamond pattern here in the optic. And just so you see what it looks like when it's all lit, I took a picture, whoops, which just went away. There we go. Hopefully you can see that. That is what it looks like when you shine a black light on it. This one really glows very well. So if you like uranium glass, which I really do, and I think a lot of people do now, this pitcher might be for you. This is what it looks like under ordinary light. And the green pitcher is $24 and it is number 4747, the green depression glass pitcher from the 1930s. Okay, Stacy Brinkley, you are the winner of the Otagiri mugs. I hope you enjoy them. I love them. My next item happens to be something that we were actually all talking about on um, Sunday's deep dive about fashion. And it's really ironic because I bought it that morning and then the deep dive was that night. It is this really, really cool print. Um, this is from a life magazine, but this is Christian Dior and this is his salon in 1948 and I just thought in Paris and I just thought it was the most interesting picture. There's a lot of detail in it and it just it shows so many of his pieces. Those hats that she was talking about, I think it's Jolaine, I can't remember her name. But anyway, I thought this was really fun and I thought it was in great shape and would make a really neat piece to frame. So I thought it would be really a decorative piece, nice for a closet or something. So I'm doing $8 on that and it is item number four. All right, we're back to me, and I can announce that Brooke Lagan won the necklace. That was number 80, the fringe necklace. Brooke, yours is a new name uh, to me, so it's a good reminder that for anyone who claims an item whose name is announced or you see in the chat that is announced by us or our moderators as the winner of the item, uh, make sure you're sending an email to the respective uh, seller. So my email address is running along the bottom and I'm going to do my best to keep the names and the email addresses matching the person doing the presenting. So and I apologize if I uh, mess up on that. But my next item is there has been some discussion in one of my chats previously about a couple people uh, and their uh, interest and love of Taylor Smith and Taylor. And initially, I'm like, oh, I don't really cover, carry it all that much. And then I discovered, wait a minute, I actually had several pieces. So I sold one at the, I think, a couple sales ago. And then I finally found these. I knew I had them somewhere. But what I what I have is a set of four of the Taylor Smith and Taylor Lou Ray pastels. So you've got a, a teacup and saucers. You've got the pink. We've got the yellow. We've got green. And we've got the blue. They all have the matching cups to go with each of the four colors. They're all in perfect king condition, no chips, no cracks. Uh, so it's the Lure Pastel uh, teacups and saucers, set of four in the four different colors. You can have those, this entire set of four is available for $15. And you can get that by giving me number 82. 82, $15 for the full set of Lure Pastel teacups and saucers. All right. That was a really beautiful piece, by the way, George. For those who don't know, I'm a huge, huge uranium and Vaseline glass guy. So I guess I should do my uh, piece now, too. But before I do that, the winner of the Fenton boot was Fab Finds Fairy. So congratulations. So the next item, this is a really cool piece. So this is made by Kanawha Glass. Um, and as you can see, this is actually crackle glass. 
Um, so that's, first of all, crack glass is really awesome. Just the technique that it takes to make that type of glass. Um, so this is like a nice little pitcher creamer sort of thing. Um, you could actually also put flowers in it. It's really pretty. Uh, the cool thing about this is that it does actually glow also. So you can see I have my little light right there and that glows. So for this Kanawa crackle glass pitcher creamer vase, $10. And the number is 56. Okay, so the uh, person who got the Vaseline glass or uranium glass pitcher is Terry Ann's Eclectic. You got number 47, the green pitcher for $24. So if you'll please send an email, we'll get that process. Just to let everybody know, I have an out of town show this weekend. So I will be processing everything on Monday, uh, but we will get those things out to you. I had a, I asked in an Instagram post telling everyone we were doing this tonight if anyone had any special requests. And a couple of people said, yes, do you have any more Royal Gouda? And I'm running low, but I have a couple of pieces. And I'm going to do this as a twofer. I, think, I hope that's all right with everyone because they're very different from each other. So I have a feeling the person who wants one will... Uh, one will want one and one will want the other. Uh, what we have here, we have one of the little favor vases from about 1910 to 1920. And we also have the shoe, which is the same era. They were made by two different companies. The companies are well listed on the bottom. This one is the uh, Corona factory. And this one was by uh, Evora and is marked on the bottom as well. And these two pieces are $18 a piece, and the numbers are 38 for the vase and 48 for the shoe. So 38 and 48 for the pieces of Royal Gouda. So those of you who watch my channel know that I was a former science teacher. So the next thing I'm going to show you has the science. It's a very rare and unusual find, and I was so excited to find this. What it is, and I have to be careful showing it to you because there's some nudity. <laughs> so, you know, but on the edge. What I have are from the 1930s, they're at home uh, anatomy charts that are kind of three-dimensional and there is a girl and a boy and they are from and i'll get the envelope everything is all here the mannequins uh the new modern home physician so this would have been a kit that came with a book and then i have the actual anatomy pieces so i'm going to show you using our little fellow here because he's robed when you open these up they and there's a guide that goes with all the parts and all the you know organs and everything. Look at all the layers to these. These sell very well and sell for over $100. It just keeps going and going. I don't wanna tear anything, but there's probably 12 layers there. And the girl, she's in just as great shape. I gotta be careful with her. So <laughs> um, I'll try to show you anything you shouldn't see. But anyway, Aren't these just awesome? And it just keeps going and going and going. So really fun find. And if nobody wants them, I'm completely cool with that. And here is the list of the organs that have the corresponding numbers. So that, oh, and I forgot to say, Fat Birds Finds, you guys won the um, Christian Dior, right? Christian Dior um, thing. So good job. So this uh, anatomy chart, $36, which is way well, well below what it's worth. And I hope no one wants it. And it is item number 10. Way to sell it, Kelly. Hope no one wants it. All right. Well, I did not know you were a science teacher. So that explains why uh, you and I click so well. I have a degree in chemistry. It is useless to me, but I also have a science background. Uh, so let's see. So the winner of the Lou Ray Cups and Saucers was Suzanne McLean. I cannot tell you how happy that makes me because that means I don't have to pack them because Suzanne actually comes to my house and saves all of her shipping and she comes for all the freight charges and she buys from my house. So 
even better. So congratulations, Suzanne, you got the Lou Ray pastel set. I was also reminded uh, in uh, this, I mentioned earlier that this was kind of the research team. We, each of them has been talking a little bit about the deep dives. Uh, George did a deep dive with me on vintage cameras. Tim did a deep dive with me on uranium glass, but not to be left out, Kelly will be doing a deep dive with me the second Sunday in August. She'll be doing a deep dive on the little, on little golden books. So I'm really excited about that one. If you watch her video, she does a lot with little golden books and I thought it'd be a really fun uh, topic uh, to be able to do research on. And I just did one yesterday on fashion. So that's what uh, with, uh, or Sunday, I'm sorry, this past weekend on Sunday with uh, vintage fashion. So that's what Kelly was mentioning on that. Uh, all right, so my next item, if you have watched my channel in the past for, it was entirely unintentional, but it has turned into somewhat of a, a running joke that I have an obsession for coasters. Hey, I will own that, I will live up to that, and I will honor that when I do a sale. So at every sale I've had, I have had at least one set of coasters, and this is my set of coasters for tonight's sale. So this is a lacquer uh, set of coasters with the image of a pagoda on the top. On the inside, so there's a the lid comes off, and on the inside you've got the set of coasters. You have the full set of six and they have the individual, the Asian uh, design. They have multiple designs. They're absolutely gorgeous. They're in absolutely perfect condition. There's no chips, there's no cracks, there's no paint loss. The gold is in great shape, even around the edges. But it's just a simple vintage set of this lacquer material. You can kind of hear it clacking together a little bit. Um, they are available as the full set for only $8. So you get the full set of six coasters plus its case for $8 by giving me number 96. 96 set of coasters, $8. There we go, I'm unmuted. So congratulations to Connie Cable. You are the winner of the vintage Kanawha Uranium Crackle Glass Pitcher Vase Creamer. All right. Next up, we're going to do a little porcelain china. So this is a J&G Meekin. The name of the pattern is American Heritage. It is a beautiful blue and white. So it's a little bit bigger than a creamer, but a little bit smaller than a pitcher. So, you know, a large size creamer would be my opinion. But the detail on there is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and there is no apparent crazing. And it is marked on the bottom, as you can see. And so for this lovely, beautiful blue and white piece, American Heritage by J&G Meekin, for $10, and the number will be 61. of the Gouda vase was Fab Finds Fairy. So if you'll email me, we will get that processed for you. The next item that I have here, oh, and by the way, Kelly, uh, you know, I'm finding one thing that's difficult about being on this side of this is that I didn't get to bid on the guts, but uh, you and I might want to talk about that off camera since no one uh, stepped up for them. I thought they were great. Uh, in the meantime, I have a pair of candlesticks. These are Lennox and they have the gold mark. These are the Aquarius pattern. They also have the paper label. Let's see if I can get that where you can see it. And that is going to make them a 1960s or 70s set. Aquarius is this very fancy pattern. Lennox is really great quality. It is the American maker of all the china that's been used in the White House since 1917. It's got the gold trim on the edges. Uh, they're in really nice condition. Let me try to hold them so you can see the pattern a little bit better. And yeah, hopefully I'm on camera there. <laughs> Anyhow, the pair of Lennox candlestick holders, I got these for a very good price and can offer a great deal. These are going to be $15. $15 for the Lennox candlestick pair. They are number 34 Lennox candlesticks, 34. Well, I think I did actually have a buyer for that anatomy chart and it was EAB9204. So George, I'm sorry you missed out. And George wanted to talk to me because he knows what a 
fantastic deal that was. They sell for easily over $100. You really got something special. So the next item that I am going to do is beautiful, and my daughter is very upset with me for selling it. It's this gold compact by Stratton. That's an English company that has been making quality compacts for a very long time. This particular bottom denotes that this is a piece that was made from, and I want to make sure I do this right, 1930 to 1950. It is in phenomenal shape. It's a beautiful mirror here. Don't look at my cluttered shelves on the other side. And then in the um, middle, and this is not easy to do on screen, the powder puff, I'm gonna cover the mirror. Powder puff has never been used. It's ready for, they still sell the powder. It's just a beautiful piece. And it's got this lovely, lovely botanical print on it. Pine cones and leaves and any a science teacher would love to do her makeup in the woods, you know. <laughs> so um, selling this for $24 and it is item number 22. All right, and I can announce that Karen Dondelinger won the set of coasters. So congratulations, Karen. Uh, next item I'm gonna bring up, piece of ephemera. Uh, probably at some point as I do my theme sales, I'm kind of alternating between major sales and theme sales. I'll probably have an ephemera sale at some point, but this was a piece I thought would be fun uh, for tonight. So this is a vintage um, mixology booklet uh, issued by Southern Comfort magazine or Southern Comfort Alcohol in like this little magazine uh, format. It is copyrighted 1974. So it's happy hour mixology, 45 drink recipes. But what's very cool about it is it has a an astrology theme to it. So there's these great early 70s, late 60s graphics that run through the whole thing that highlight the different, um, the different, the different signs. So I am a Libra. So that is the artwork for the Libra. And so let's see, it says that uh, by the scales, you weigh all sides of a question carefully. You're intelligent, well-balanced, have a high sense of justice and honor, and you strive for beauty and harmony, are sociable and a gracious host. Maybe. And it also individually then gives the individual recipes. Of course, most of them with uh, you can use with Southern Comfort. But what I liked about a couple of the recipes is it gives alternate. So it takes the traditional Tom, uh, the traditional uh, Tom's Col Tom Collins, the is it just a Collins anyway, uh, that uses gin and it gives you a Southern Comfort Collins. So of course they're marketing themselves. So it's this great little uh, pamphlet, simple magazine ends up being like, what is this? Three sheets, so it's like a six page little, little booklet. And then this this fell out of it. I don't know if it actually has any relationship to it because this one says Holland House, but I got them together. So this is like this little uh, mail order piece that you could send in to get a, uh, the powdered cocktail. So you've also just got the cool artwork tied to that. Just kind of a cute little piece of ephemera. I just love the graphics of the astrology. Uh, you can get it for $6. For $6, you get it by giving me number 90. Number $96 gets a little Southern Comfort uh, advertising pamphlet. All right. So we're going to start by congratulating Christina. I'm going to try my best to properly say your last name. Bagwat. So Christina Bagwat, you have won the Meekin Creamer. All right. So next up, we have a pair of glass candlestick holders. Okay. So as you can see, these are a white opalescent glass in a form of hobnail. So a lot of times these can be easily mistaken for French opalescent hobnail by Fenton, but these are actually made by Anchor Hawking and they're called Moonstone. So they have a nice layer of opalescent white around the top where the candle goes in. And then they also have a nice layer of opalescent around the edge of the candlestick as well. So you have two of these, so you get the pair. And the pair of Anchor Hawking Moonstone candlesticks will be $11 and the number 67. The winner of the Lennox candlesticks is Lynn Johnson. So if you'll email me about those, we'll get that going for you. 
And the next item I have is from the 19 late 60s. She is a lovely lady named Coralie. She is a Royal Dalton figure, and Royal Dalton was very famous for these in the mid 20th century, particularly. They are all hand painted. The detail is really tremendous on them. The quality of the porcelain is very pure. They did not really allow factory seconds to get out of the factory. You can date her by the type of printing on the bottom, and that is what tells us that it's a 1960s, late 60s piece. I believe 65, if I'm reading that right. It's a little hard to get focused, but I think you get it there. You can also see an old dealer had a price of $250 on her at one time. However, my price tonight is $25. And so she, if you like her, she is a very pretty gal and a wonderful price. Coralie, $25. Royal Dalton is number 41. So if you are interested in Coralie, please send in your number. Number 41. Okay, the next item I have, oh, I'm going to announce Mama J, you are the winner of the Gold Strand app, a Compact. So I'm so excited for you. It's a beautiful piece. The next item I'm so excited about, it is barware. And it is the most glorious mid-century modern barware. This is Culver 6 shot glasses that suspend in this caddy so magically that I was afraid to put them in my antique booth because it just might be a situation where somebody might knock it out. So in the original caddy, these shot glasses that have 22 karat gold around them and you can see there is a marquee shape that is in a green diamond this is the valencia pattern valencia pattern was the most popular pattern in their line and they made many many pieces in it so this is a great starter piece for a starter set because they'll mix and match with so many of the colder pieces and as well it um has no chip no damage whatsoever and it is just a fantastic set. These sell for well over $100. They're very desirable. But today I am going to give you a fantastic deal. $36 for this beautiful set, number 17. All right, I will start by announcing that number 90, the recipe book, Southern Comfort Book, went to Michelle Co Comfy Cozy Living. So thanks, Michelle, for picking that up. Uh, if anyone has not followed Michelle's channel, she does weekly sales as well. She's also on Thursday, but hers are during the day. I think hers are at 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern. She was on my uh, group sale last month, and that was actually her very first sale. And if we didn't, I think I mentioned at the beginning, this also is Tim's first sale. Inadvertently, I've kind of created a uh, platform for people to do jumping off, and I'm thrilled to be able to do it. So thank you for Michelle. Thank you, Michelle, for picking that up. Congratulations. Uh, so the next item I'm going to show is probably my favorite item uh, in the sale tonight. It was also the favorite item that I picked up. No offense, George. Uh, on a trip that I did down to visit George uh, and attend one of the estate sales he was setting up. I picked this up in an antique shop uh, in Illinois, but it was as part of that trip. It is a salt and pepper shaker in the form of a pillow of the, the man's ring and the female, the man, man and woman uh, wedding ring. It's a luster glaze. It's in great condition considering it's dated 1939. So this was an item from Ambrose and Mary's wedding. Uh, what I, I'm assuming these would have been set out maybe on the tables uh, for the guests. I can't imagine these would have been individual salts and peppers, but maybe one for each uh, table or even just one for the head table for the bride and groom. It's absolutely perfect condition. The gold is in great condition. There are no chips, there are no cracks. It has the, still the original Japan stamp on the bottom. It's just super sweet. You can see the bottom is just, you know, the being able to fit in here. They do actually still have the original corks and both of them are marked Japan. So I absolutely love this piece. And if I were going to start a salt and pepper collection, this would be what I would start it with. But I have enough collections. So this one I'm going to pass on. So this is the Marion Ambrose 1939 salt and pepper shakers. It's available for $16. It's available for number 77. 77 16 dollars 
for the 1939 salt and pepper shaker. This is difficult for me not to shop when you guys are showing all these really nice items right now. But um, the winner of the Anchor Hawking Moonstone Candlesticks was Lori C. So congratulations to Lori C. All right. So next up, we're going to do a little – I'm kind of inspired by what everybody else shows. So I'm going to go ahead and go with my mid-century modern barware piece. So – here we have a mid-century modern ice bucket in the diamond pattern. It's almost, it's not quite turquoise. It's like a sea green, I would say. A little bit lighter than a sea green. In wonderful condition. And this is actually made by Hazel Atlas. I don't know. You probably won't be able to see the marking, but the marking is on the bottom. So this is a lovely ice bucket, mid-century modern diamond pattern, Hazel Atlas. And... It can be yours for the price of $10 and the number 66. So the Royal Dalton Coralie is going to live with Laura Ann. So Laura Ann, if you'll reach out to me, we will get her ready to go live with you. Thank you for your purchase. And the next item I'd like to show is this. These were made about 35 years ago. It's Franklin Mint, but Franklin Mint actually made some really, really nicely done hand-painted items. This is ceramic bisque, and I'm trying to find some ways to make it show a little better, but this butterfly has lots of great color. Let's see if we can turn them around so you see it up. He's got his antenna. This is part of a rather large collection of these. I probably have a dozen or 15 more of various varieties of these. And this particular one is for sale for $12. And the Franklin Mint Butterfly is number 45, $12, number 45. Okay, Fab Finds Fairy, you are the winner of that awesome Culver bar set. So good job. The next item I want to share with you is some beautiful costume jewelry. This is from jewelry company Boucher. Boucher, I like it sounds, um, Marcel Boucher was born in Paris and he apprenticed for this Pierre, Pierre, um, Pierre Cartier. Have you ever heard of him? And uh, he married a woman that also was his head designer and she designed for Harry Winston and also Tiffany. This is phenomenal quality clip earring. I'm actually showing you them upside down because if I turn the card over, they might fall um, because it's just cardboard, but they have beautiful stones, a pearl, um, these are this is costume, but this is from between 1945 and 1950. Look at that luster. I did nothing to it. I did not clean these in any way. And then in the stem right here, there are actual baguettes. These are absolutely stunning. So beautiful. And my daughter is giving me a hairy owl right now. So for these Boucher earrings that date from 1945 to 1950. This is a steal again, $24, clip-on earrings, number 14. All right, and I can announce that the 1939 salt and pepper shaker went to Barb JM. So congratulations, Barb. All right, next item, if you follow me on Instagram, and all four of us have Instagram, so if you're watching across the bottom, uh, we're listing your Instagram channels. But if you followed my Instagram today, you would have seen a couple of my previews, and this was one of them. I even did the video of it on Instagram as a video to show that it's a nodder. And as a couple of people commented on it, they'd never seen a planter that was also a nodder. So I don't know why you'd be walking around wiggling your plants, but you too can wiggle your plants and have her not her head nod. Uh, this actually came from George. I purchased this on my trip to George uh, last month and uh, thrilled to be able to pass them on. I will say I, I was hunting through some of the videos that were posted by all of us that uh, went to his estate sale, looking for the video where her head fell off and rolled down the floor. Uh, didn't find that video, but uh, so in full disclosure, you can kind of see I reattached her head. It's a little bit of a, it's a little off. 
So she basically can only say no. She can't say yes. And we're just going to leave that alone. Um, but it's still an adorable little knotter. You can tell, you, you might want to work with the wire a little bit. It's just the, the wire that holds the head on might be able to be twisted in a slightly different way. But once I got it to stay on, I was pretty happy with it. But it's not in absolutely perfect shape because the head's probably not quite the way it was supposed to be originally. But there's no chips, there's no cracks, there's no issues with her. Just maybe a little bit of a crooked head. So I priced her accordingly. Uh, she's available for only $12. And you can have her by giving me number 89. 89 is for the little ducky head knotter planter. I'm muted. All right. So the winner of the Hazel Atlas Mid-Century Modern Diamond Barware Ice Bucket was Lori C. So Lori C, you'll get... Uh, all your orders together and don't worry we are great packers if you don't believe me you can watch our packing videos on our youtube channel so next up uh pyrex is another one of my big uh items that i sell all of the time besides uranium glass so this is not your typical pyrex bowl but this is a really awesome mid-century modern pyrex gold oil and the gold is in absolutely phenomenal shape, as you can see. No wear to the gold. Uh, it is marked on the back, Pyrex USA. And this it has the top as well. And you can have this mid-century modern Pyrex oil cruet for $7, number 55. Okay, so the winner of the last item, the butterfly, is Four Sandy's Lilacs. So Four Sandy, if you'll get a hold of me, we'll get that going for you. The next item I did a post about three days ago, and I have not been doing the Christmas in July sales, but I said, you know what, I'll put a Christmas item in there because everybody's enjoying that a lot. And so I put this out and Misty at Thrifter Hunter, Thrifter Junter Vinci thrifter junker vintage hunter say that three times fast um she said that's a cute little nugget and i think he is too he is japanese he is a light ceramic and he's just got the japan label he's not a holt howard i'm not sure who did him he's from about 1970 he's got a great curly beard kind of reminds you of tim a little bit right and so this little guy is a planter or a holder for candy or whatever you need to have on the table at Christmas time. And he is $12, number 49, the Santa planter. 49 is $12 for the Santa planter. Okay, L Brinkley, those beautiful, beautiful earrings coming home to you. Okay, the next item I have are, because we have such a passion for these in this community are salty and peppy. They are in fantastic shape um, as far as paint. However, they did probably have some hot and cold happening. So they did crack down at the bottom, but nowhere else. Their tops come off just fine and there's no issue, but it wouldn't hold the salt or pepper. Um, because of that crack, but they're amazing. I tried to find some that were this size online and I could, I mean, these are big boys. Look at that. Couldn't find any. Um, so I'm letting this go. It does have a little bit of paint loss right here, but these are so kitschy and so cute and they can go home to you for the right price of $12. And this is item number five. You're, mute, you're muted. Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, so I guess you didn't hear who won the uh, Duck Knotter Planner. Uh, so Lori C, you won the Duck Knotter Planner for number 89. So uh, we didn't really talk in advance what we were all going to be sharing, but we seem to be having a running theme of uh, barware. And I actually had another piece of barware, so I'm bringing it out. Uh, this one is uh, one of those cork trivets that I'm not sure necessarily has a huge amount of age to it. 
Uh, I think they once upon a time sold these in kits where you took the the corks yourself and you attached them into the into the trivet. So it has the cork, uh, also the cork pieces on the bottom as footer. It also has a, a place to be able to to uh, hang it. Trying to figure out if I could see maybe if there was any age to it. The there's one of the corks actually is dated 1995, but then underneath it, there's one for barefoot wines, which I don't think has been around. I mean, it's probably been around 20, 30 years. Um, we're not talking about a huge uh, ancient vintage piece. My personal favorite is there's something out there called Seven Deadly Zins. I think I may need to look for that just because of the name. But anyway, so this is just a fun, it's like a giant coaster. Uh, so I had to pick it up. Uh, so it is a wine cork trivet. And it is available for $7 by giving me number 94, $94, $7 for the wine cork trivet. All right. So congratulations to Pamela Haynes. You are the winner of the Pyrex oil cruet. So enjoy. All right. So I guess it's time for me now to show my salt and pepper shaker. All right. So I have this vintage sad dog and trash can shaker set so the dog is a little sad um he has a little bit of paint missing on that eye as you can see and the cool part about it is they detach so you have the sad dog shaker here bottom is still there and you have the trash can shaker and the bottom is still there so this is a really cute piece um the only thing about it is just that little bit of blue paint missing from his eye. But besides that, somebody should buy him and make him a happy dog and trash can. So for that salt and pepper shaker set, for $9, give me number 70. I like your stuff and I like your flourish, Tim. I also wanted to tell Suzanne McLean that you are the person who is getting the Santa planter. And so if you'll contact me, Suzanne McLean, we'll get that going. And my next item here, this is from the 1930s. You can tell because it's a reverse painted silhouette on glass. And this is a jewelry box or a dresser box. Uh, people would have put gloves in them back then. People use them for any sorts of utility purposes these days. It's in pretty good shape. It's a little bit worn on the paint that you can see, but it is all intact. And the inside is nice too, nice and clean. They didn't put anything nasty in there. So you can see the interior is still that nice silver color. This was similar to the silhouettes that you would have hang, hung on your wall back then. But the nice thing about this is that you actually can put it on your dresser and get some use out of it as well. And this piece is priced at $18. The silhouette box is number 33. Silhouette box, $18, number 33. Okay, Judy Skelet, you got salty and patty. Next, I, I'm going to show you some ephemera. It's two advertisements for uh, beech nut gum. One is from 1957, and that is this ad, and I'm sorry, it's so glossy because it's on a cover. I didn't want to take it out or in a cover. Um, this is a prom date. He's got a corsage, be choosy, and that is from 1957. And on the back of this is a strong man and a clown. I pulled this for Misty. She loves clowns, so anybody want to buy this for her? But the strong man, and it's actually really a great image. So that is from 1937. And so these two images I thought were really stunning. And I know somebody out there would appreciate them. It's going to be $12. And that is number 18. All right, and I can announce the cork trivet went to April Fool. So congratulations, Rick. I hope you have uh, fun with that uh, cork trivet. All right, the next piece actually developed a little bit of debate. Again, if you watched my, or if you follow my Instagram channel, this was another preview that I had posted. It is a set of hand-painted Limoges porcelain. Uh, actually, I thank Tim a little bit for helping me out with this one. This is a three-piece set. So you've got the little, I call it the, the breakfast set. So like a little toast plate, 
There's a cereal bowl and then a milk jug. Each one is marked with the Limoges T and V, which stands for Tressman and Vote à Limoges, France. So each of these is stamped. It is also then dated with a message from the person who made it to somebody else dated 1910. And so I asked, I said, okay, this to me does not look, I couldn't find this pattern in anything. And to be honest, it didn't look like anything Limoges would do. And Tim clarified that Limoges, like many other, uh, poor, well, Limoges is a region, uh, that what TNV would do is they would offer blanks and these would go into individuals' homes, that they would either paint them for entertainment purposes or paint them as a finished part of a finishing school to learn you know, a, a dainty, a female to learn a dainty trade um, or to make money. So these, and this is what was posted on Instagram, became a question of what exactly was this painter trying to represent? It, to me, when I picked it up, they were bunnies. They were automatically bunnies. Of course they were bunnies. I actually picked two sets up. One of them also had chickens on it. Uh, they were clearly painted the same person, same time. They're both dated 1910. So one had chickens, this one must be bunnies. Then my daughter, the huckster helper saw it and she said, dude, that, okay, she didn't call me dude. She said, that is an armadillo. And now that she said it's an armadillo, I can't not see an armadillo. So whoever painted it was very consistent. This became the most armadillo-like version. And they also look, I'm sorry, they kind of look like angry armadillos or bunnies with an attitude. So whether you are looking for some naively painted bunnies or you have a hankering for some armadillos to grace your breakfast plate, this three-piece set, all three of the pieces are marked with the T and V uh, Limoges and the T and V is in the uh, lozenge. Uh, so the T and V Limoges, France. All three of those pieces, only the uh, plate is the one dated 1910, but clearly they go together. Those armadillos were only made by one person. Uh, you can get the set of three is available for $25 and it's number 91. Number 91, $25 is the three piece armadillo bunny set. All right. So the winner of the vintage sad dog and trash can was Joanne Baber. So congratulations. And next up we have some jadeite. It is a vintage jadeite lotus candle votive now it is unmarked um i still do believe that it is vintage because of kind of the opaqueness that you see in this piece um and it is in gorgeous condition it's kind of has um as you could i don't know if you could see hopefully it's ribbed so it's a little bit little bulbous um and it is in the lotus shape it is a beautiful jadeite lotus candle votive and it can be yours or tea light as my dukes is yelling at me in the ear for ten dollars number 54 the jadeite can be yours i think that was the armadillo king leading the bunnies but uh that was really fun and actually everybody's got really cool stuff tonight this is great I want to let Vicki Haney know that if you'll contact me, you will be receiving the silhouette box. And that's Vicki Haney. So please get a hold of me. And my next item is one more Franklin Mint item. I had a, uh, some folks who had a couple of collections, and here's the other. This guy is one of the woodland creatures. These were made about 35 years ago. And let's see if we can get him to come into focus a little better. They are all two parts. I'm going to put this down and we'll see if that helps at all. They're all two parts. So you've got an animal sitting in some sort of a nest or shelter. Here's the bottom marked Woodland Surprises. And this is oh, that focused for a minute. Anyway, it has a designer signature. These were made in Korea in 1985. And they are very cute and this particular one is the fox in the little rock wall and he is priced at seven dollars number 40 four zero is the fox in the nest for seven dollars okay the next item i have is a very fun item 
It's a Crowley doll from Ireland. It's a leprechaun. And I think Tim's beard's a little better, but I think he's pretty styling. He's got these little socks and shoes on. I just thought he was such a cool decorating piece. He does have some holes in his socks, but I think that adds to the charm. These are highly collectible from the 1950s and he's in great shape except for the socks and I absolutely love him. So he is going to be $36 and he is number 16. All right, and I can announce that Don Schonkweiler won the Limoges Bunny Dillos, as they are now being named. Um, and so I'm thrilled that they're going to her. And uh, so Don is helping represent the great state of Maryland, uh, where Tim is also located. Um, she's in uh, Huntingtown, Maryland. So, And she also runs a, a Dachshund charity. So anyone who's looking for a new charity support, J-O-M-D-R, Just One More Dachshund Rescue. That is, Do that is Dawn, currently the proud mama of 17 dachshunds, and now some bunny dillos. All right, when we were planning the event, there was a couple of discussions, as, as George had mentioned, about whether this would become a Christmas uh, sale. I did my Christmas sale last week, um, but I did find a piece that I did not include in that sale because it had fallen off the table and I didn't realize it. So I decided to rescue it and uh, bring it here. So it is you not necessarily have to be a Christmas uh, apron, but I would say it is definitely a holiday or a, a, uh, fancy dress, um, apron because it does have that gilded, that, uh, the glittery lace trim around it. Uh, it has a 19 inch drop and it is 83 inches from tip of, um, trim to tip of trim. So it's a fair list. This, this would go around me. And um, I'm not going to stand up because I'll knock a couple things over. But and where's Babusha? So anyway, this is a Christmas apron to try and match what I had at least one item that I would have for a Christmas sale. And so this gold lace trimmed apron is available for ten dollars, and it is number eighty-five. Eighty-five, ten dollars for the gold trimmed apron. All right, so. The winner of the vintage Jadeite ribbed and bulbous, as she so eloquently put it, was the lovely Michelle Comfy Cozy Living. So congratulations. All right. So I guess I'm going to try and like bounce off of that Christmas thing. Uh, so here we have a vintage Lefton nativity scene trinket box. Um, and this is actually almost like big. Uh, so it has the nativity scene on top, and it has poinsettias, I would imagine those are what those are, around the edge. Um, and it also comes with a tag. It is the Christopher Collection, uh, Holy Treasures. And on the bottom, it has still has the left-in sticker and the back stamp. And the inside, and it's nice and... Bisky smooth. And so for that trinket box for ten dollars, you can give me number sixty-eight. All right. So the winner of my last item, the Franklin Mint Fox, was Gabrielle White. So Gabrielle, reach out to me and we'll get that on the road for you. The next item I have is a, another piece of Lennox. This was done, I believe, about 25 to 30 years ago. We have a lot of June brides that got postponed. So this might be a nice centerpiece for someone who is going to have a bridal shower or wants it on a table at a wedding. Or if it just reminds you of you during your wedding, she's really quite lovely. She's got the hand applied bouquet. Her fingers are all intact. She's in great shape. She's got the Lennox Classic Victorian Bride mark on the bottom. She is fine porcelain, and she is going to be $25. The Lennox Bride is number 42. Lennox Bride, $25, number 42.
Okay, the next item I have is this beautiful little swirl pottery piece. This is Desert Sands Pottery. They're out of Nevada. It's just a very cool little piece in perfect condition. I love it. And that is going to be $12, and that's number eight. All right, I had no takers on the holiday apron. So I guess since I didn't model it, no one wanted to pick it up. But if you're still interested in the apron, that was a number 85 for $10. My next item is this uh, manicure set that does open, there we go. It is a Barbara Bates manicure set. It has this you know, lush green kind of velvet, I guess it is velvet uh, exterior, but you can see there's a little, I have a feeling it was probably a cigarette burn or something that took away the outer layer of the velvet. So there's a little bit of damage to it on the one side, but the, pe the set itself is seems to be an almost perfect, I would say unused condition because you look at the comb, every aspect of it is an absolutely pristine shape everything is fitted just love the idea of everything fitting this lovely box it does have the clasp on it it was a little bit smarter than me but it does and it is again so it does pop open there's no latch it just kind of frictions against it and you can see there's maybe a little bit of wear you know right along those edges yeah. but again it's a nice looking piece and it appears to have a piece of tape stuck to the outside so that's uh that'll come away you don't you, you, or, you, or you can get that for free but anyway so the barber baits uh, manicure set is nine dollars and you can have it by giving me number 78 number 78 nine dollars for the barbara bates manicure set all right so congratulations once again to pamela haynes you are the lucky winner of the vintage left in nativity scene trinket box enjoy all right next up we're going to do a little california pottery so here we have this Really awesome mid-century modern California pottery style planter. Um, it is Ab Aborn, California, is the California pottery sign edge on the bottom there. Uh, it is this really nice color combo of like a it's almost like a guacamole green and a little bit of a khaki tannish chestnut brown. So it's a really nice color combo and a nice size to a uh, good rectangle size. And it is in great condition, as you can see. And you can see it's kind of got like a little bit of blend going on there as well. And that is all around, up and down. And this planter, California Pottery, can be yours for the price of $12 if you give me number 72. Our next item here is a blue and white cup and saucer. And this looks like flow blue. You might think it was Victorian from the design, but it is actually by a company called Lamanazov. And it has this very funny looking Russian label on the bottom made in USSR. Let's try to get it straight where you can see it there. And Lamanazov was a great old porcelain making company that we did not have access to until things thawed between us and Russia in the 1980s. And this cup is gonna be from about that time. It is a very pretty rose pattern with the gilding. It's all in very nice condition. And I know that we've got some cup and saucer fans out there as am I. This is only $8 plus shipping, and it is number 43. 43 is the Lamanazov Cup and Saucer for $8. There we go. Sorry about that. My last winner for the Swirl Pottery is Val M. So congratulations on that. The next thing I want to show you is this beautiful black amethyst elegant glass depression glass and this is stunning it's so beautiful when you hold it up to the light it does have that purple hue to it um, these are from the late 20s early 30s very rare pattern um, i believe they're black forest and that is um there's some confusion because they were so limited by the patents 
Patton City for Van Deman. And they're just absolutely like very art deco, just awesome. I love these. There is one little ding. I didn't see it until just now right in here. I, I think it's manufacturing because it feels smooth. But anyway, just so, so pretty. So the two of these, the set, $18, and that is number one. Okay, so we can back up. Uh, old Junk actually claimed the lace-trimmed uh, apron. So congratulations, Old Junk. I know you mentioned this was your first sale, so welcome, and congratulations for claiming an item. And Gabby White took the manicure set. So congratulations, Gabby. All right, the next item I've got uh, the everyone, and this is, I'm gonna be doing a challenge at some point, and so I'll just give a little bit of a sneak peek. Uh, I'm gonna be starting a, uh, doing a YouTube video challenge that I'll put out as an open challenge to all YouTubers to talk about the first something in the vintage world, whether it's the first item that you got to start your collection, the first item that, the first item you sold if you're a, a reseller, and the first item that I sold was a set of napkin rings. And so ever since then, when I, I'm on the lookout to get napkin rings, because it's just one of those, I don't know if it's a lucky charm, good luck thing, omen, whatever, that I just think, you know, the first thing I sold was a set of, they were cowrie, route, cowrie shell napkin rings. I just got this set of napkin rings. I'm going to sell them here. So these are uh, ceramic. They have the unfinished bottoms and they're fired. There's not the stilt marks because there was no glaze on the bottom, but these are ceramic, not porcelain. And they give me kind of the vibes probably more from the eighties of that, you know, when people used to do the rubber, the stamping techniques, that the country kitchen idea. What I liked about the way these were done is all four of, there's a set of four and they were designed in slightly different way. The sides were done slightly differently. So on one side, the apples were turned up and on the other side, the apples were painted on the side. So I guess depending on how you were laying the napkin, once you put the napkin in there, you could turn it on the side and you would have the, the uh, napkin ring would have the apple in the right direction. So I guess they kind of thought of everything. They are hand painted because you can see each one of the apples is slightly different uh, the way they were done, but they're all the same style. They're in absolutely perfect condition. There's no chips, there's no cracks, no, no crazing that I can tell at a glance. Um, they're just really nice inexpensive piece, just kind of a fun item. Again, throwback to uh, the first item I ever sold on Etsy. And again, I'll be putting out a challenge to talk about uh, vintage firsts uh, probably in the next couple of weeks. But if you want this set of uh, four napkin rings, you can have them for $5 by giving me number 84. Number 84 for the Apple napkin rings. 84 was the year I was born. So the winner Shut of up. the California pottery planter is suzanne mclean so congratulations for your planter all right so those black depression glass amethyst uh sugar and creamer absolutely stunning so it made me decide i'm gonna go ahead and throw up a sugar and creamer as well so here we have this is a nice milk glass sugar and creamer now if you look at this pattern closely i'm gonna try my best to get that in focus for you it looks eerily similar to jeanette glass cube um but these are actually marked hazel atlas um and i believe they refer to this pattern as cubist um and it is a sugar and creamer lovely milk glass great pattern great shape and the pair can be yours for the price of ten dollars, number fifty-seven. The winner of the Lamanazov cup and saucer was Fab Finds Fairy, but I wanted to answer. Say that three times fast. But I wanted to answer uh, quickly. Someone said, "Why is that not flow blue?" And and technically it is because. Uh, the transfer has run just a little bit under the glaze, so it did flow a little bit. Uh, it just is an old flow blue. Most flow blue that people associate with that is really back into like the Victorian era. Um, anyway, our next item. We have a Hummel figurine. Now she's one of the larger ones and Hummel figurines, yes, there's a lot of them around, but 
the nice thing about her is she is specific to sewing and a lot of the people who maybe don't collect the figurines per se are interested in particular ones that have something to do with the hobby of theirs and there's so many folks sewing out there she is called a stitch in time she's very cute she has the stylized b mark on the bottom and this mark with the three lines was done in the 1960s primarily so she does have some age she's about 50 years old now the hand painting is really good. They're just really well made. And the prices are now very affordable for new collectors, particularly on this one. Because she's taller, she probably should sell even these days for about $35 to $40. I am offering her for $15. So the Hummel Sewing Stitch in Time is number 29. And she is $15. She's in great condition. And I hope she goes home with someone. Michelle, you are at Mermaid Cove. You are the winner of the Amethyst Black Glass, and I hear it's your birthday on Saturday. Happy birthday. Woo! The next item I have is this really cool vase. I've never seen anything like it before. It has all this relief work on it. It's so cool. From the 1950s, 60s, made in Japan. It's got part of its little label here and i love these applied flowers so much um everybody knows when you find pieces like that there's always going to be one issue and there is a petal missing um right here so i priced it accordingly but i just thought this was so so pretty so anyway we are going to have that for twelve dollars and it is item number 25. Your mic's muted. Sorry. Uh, even though I had luck selling my first item on Etsy was napkin rings, I did not sell the napkin rings here. So if you're interested in the napkin rings, you could, they're still available, number 84 for $5. Uh, next item I've got, I picked this up. These actually were also picked up on the way down to visit George. Uh, these were uh, from a, one of my, basically my favorite thrift store in Effingham, Illinois. Pick these up because I've had some luck selling Mary Englebright in the past. And I did a little bit of searching and discovered that uh, these sell pretty nicely on Etsy. Um, but I wanted to share them here because I wanted to throw some things in that I had picked up on the way down to George. So there are two canisters from the Queen of the Kitchen collection. So you've got Queen of the Kitchens on the top. This one has the use your napkin, eat those peas, drink that milk, and clean your plate. And it has the, I just saw it, the little ME uh, logo on the corner. And they are uh, stamped on the bottom. They were 1997 uh, was the manufacturing year. And then the smaller one also dated 1997, Queen of the Kitchen. This has the blue lid, drink that milk, eat those peas, use your napkin, clean your plate. So two different sizes. They both are available together and they are available for $9 by giving me number 92. So the Mary Englebright tins numbered 92 for $9. All right, congratulations and an early happy birthday to Michelle, Mermaid Cove Plants and Treasures. You have a couple of sugar and creamers coming your way now, so congratulations. Next up, we are going to do a pair of vases, so kind of Christmassy colors. So these are anchor hawking. Um, they are unmarked like a lot of anchor hawking during that time period. Uh, this is the ruby red anchor hawking vase. And this is the forest green anchor hawking vase. They are really nice size, good condition, and no chips, dings, or cracks. So you can have red and green, ruby, forest green anchor hawking vases for a price of $10 if you give me number 62. All right, let's see what we've got next. I need to tell the winner, uh, let me find. Purchaser of the Hummel figurine is Suzanne McLean. Thank you, Suzanne. Uh, you got the Hummel figurine, so 
we'll look forward to getting a package together for you. And I have my next item, which is a reverse painted silhouette again. This one is a wall hanger. This one is interesting to me in that it has a much fancier frame than they usually do and that it is a scenic rather than a couple or people courting or that sort of thing. It's got a good mark on the back. This is why by the art publishing company. And this is not one of the more standard companies that you see. So this one is unusual in a few different ways. And you can tell with that ivory and pink color in the frame that you're looking at something from about 1940. It's a sweet little piece. It measures, it says right on the back, three and a quarter by four and a half. So it'll fit in a nice little space on your wall. And it is selling for $12 number 37, the silhouette 37, $12. Okay, the next thing I have is this adorable 1939 Make It Toy Set. It's very much like Inker Toys. And the graphics are outstanding. I like how on this one, they incorporated the can and part of the um, structure of the toy. So Priberry, Make It A6 Pieces. It is full. I didn't count the pieces because it's display piece, but um, they're in there. There's a lot in there. So anyway, uh, no rusting in excellent condition. I don't know if I can show that without dumping them all out. And has a little wear up here, but again, from the 1930s. So I thought that was such a sweet decorating piece. And that is $18.21. All right, and I can congratulate Lynn Johnson for picking up the Mary Englebright tins. So congratulations, Lynn. Uh, the next item I have, I try to do a little bit of research on it and it comes into, even though I love doing the research, sometimes I have a, you have a hard time researching something if you're not 100% sure where to start the terms. So where I, what I've got is this pair of framed, I'm going to call them needlepoint, but I think they're referred to something else when they're dimensional. Because if you look at this, you can actually see her palm, her, her uh, pigtail is actually separate from the piece. So it's little stitches. So I don't think that's considered cruel work, although her hair reminds me of cruel work, the hair that's actually in the, you know, in the bun itself. Um, but this, you know, again, George is talking about sewing items. So we've got a little girl on a stool sewing. And then the other one, is a girl or woman baking with an old fashioned clawfoot stove. And same, same case, you can kind of tell her hair is dimensional as well. So you've got these nice little wooden frames. It's got the little hook on the top. So we're probably looking at the seventies, I would say with, with this era, they're in really good shape. All the stitching is really tight. Uh, they are not under glass. So they're gonna be really easy to ship. They're not heavy. Uh, so there's just the, the kind of the, the, burlap or the the muslin back uh, with the stitching so again they're not particularly heavy you can get the pair of those so you get both of them for nine dollars you get not, both of them for giving me number 79 79 nine dollars for the two pieces of needlework all right congratulations are in due to kc atx i'm going to go ahead and say that's kc addicts uh, congratulations, you won the Anchor Hawking Ruby Red and Forest Green Flower Vases. All right, so we're going to do a little bit of more MCM mid-century modern. So here I have a nice tea tin. Very mid-century modern. A little bit of an indentation right there, as you can see. Is it an indentation? No, it's not really an indentation, but in really nice shape. It's got a little bit of scratching on the front there and the nice diamond top. And then we take her open and she's gorgeous on the inside. And this mid-century modern tea tin is actually made by Masterware. And this nice mid-century modern tea tin can be yours for the price of $7 if you give me number 52. That is really cool. I like mid-century a lot. And I 
again, well, you know, this is for everyone else. So I just have to sit here and enjoy watching you all buy all this cool stuff. I want to let the let Mignon, I have the silhouette for you. And it's kind of funny. I know you're out in Washington State, and that's where I got that. So I guess it's going home. That's nice. In the meantime, I have a little figure here. This is called a Sebastian miniature. And this one does have a Christmas relation because if we can get it to focus, that's a little better there. Maybe I'll cover up my face so you can see it a bit. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I keep having to peek around it. All right. There we go. I think I got it. On the top, it says what it is. This is Oliver Twist. And so this one, there we go. Now he's in focus. The nice thing about this is that he is signed by P.W. Baston. He was the fellow in the 1940s who came up with the Sebastian's miniatures. And this was made in New England. And most of his items were either Christmas themed or New England colonial themes. And the fact that it's got his signature makes it a little more interesting for the collectors. There is a whole series of these you can collect for Christmas. And this particular Sebastian miniature of Oliver Twist is number 30 for $9. $9, number 30, the Sebastian miniature. Okay, Penny, you won the Make It Toy canister. I'm so excited for you. This next item is so cool. It is this made in Japan Airedale dog, and he is absolutely stunning. Here on his paw is where it says Japan. He is phenomenal and in great shape, and he would be awesome on a bookshelf in a stack of books. He will not get lost. He's so substantial. There is one little hairline that goes right here, but it's very subtle and doesn't take away at all. I just love him. So if you like the Airedale dog, which I do, that is $28, and that is number 13. All right, and I can congratulate uh, Chantilly Chandra. You received the pair of needlepoint uh, frames, so congratulations on that. Uh, next item I've got, and if you follow my channel, my uh, videos, my Etsy store, you know I do have a lot of uh, pottery and porcelain. So got another piece. This is the Goose family from Fitz and Floyd. It is Vidget Fitz and Floyd. It is marked. It has the uh, date stamp on the bottom in Roman numerals of 1981, uh, but it's got the uh, Fitz and Floyd name as well as the paper label indicating it was made in Japan. It's an absolutely gorgeous little piece. I'm assuming it's like a cracker tray, I, for lack of any other option, that I'm assuming it'd be food related, uh, but it's a pretty decent uh, size. Um, it would hold quite a bit. As I was pricing it today, I did notice that at the very tip of his beak, you can see a slight indentation that it's somewhat smooth to the touch that there and there is glaze over it so i don't know if the damage was caused before it was made or if somebody else had seen the damage and then tried to touch it up because i didn't notice it i literally noticed it when i went to pick it up and i, I felt that there was a shallow spot so i had to lower the price because it's not what i thought it was still a stunning piece you're still not going to be able to tell if there's anything wrong with it, and it's still a marked vintage piece, but it's only $10 because of that little ding on his beak. So $10 for the Fitz and Floyd cracker tray, giving me number 81. All right, so funny story. The winner of that T10 is actually my girlfriend, who I think is shopping for her mother, so... Josie, congratulations. You won a T10. <laughs> uh, next up is going to be, this is a really rad piece. Um, so this is uh, amber glass, and it is made by Westmoreland. And it is in the shape of a buggy, as you can see. And it is a ashtray. As you can kind of see it right there. Uh, so this is a nice amber glass ashtray by Westmoreland. Um, there's a little bit of a rough spot right here on the inside of the wheel. Um, 
and some deep little deep scratch right here on the top of the buggy but besides that it's a really cool display piece and if you want to use it as an ashtray it's obviously functional uh so that westmoreland ashtray amber glass buggy can be yours for the price of nine dollars for the number 60. Well, Michael Todd, send me your information to my email address and I will send you that Sebastian's signature figure with the signature. Uh, it seemed like it was meant to be yours. I got a kick out of your comments. And I have my next item ready to go here. And it's the other Royal Dalton I had. This is spring morning. And she's obviously having a lot of fun picking flowers, little gold flowers applied in her flower basket. This one is from 1995. This was probably the peak of their production, but a lot of these made in the 90s were made for a much shorter time than the ones that were made before. So actually some of these are the scarcer ones. And this one has the designer signature again on it, if we can get that to come in a little bit. And she is in wonderful condition. She's got, again, the very pure fine porcelain Royal Dalton was known for, and the hand painting is very delicate. Spring morning is $25, and she is number 32. So Royal Dalton spring morning, 30, number 32, $25. Okay, Val, you are the winner of the Airedale dog. He is so cool. So I can't wait to send that to you. The next item I have is this gorgeous little 1940s doll. She has a composite body. Um, her arms are plastic, but the, her body is composite. And she does, she's articulated, so she does turn. And she has this beautiful tooled dress on. I just think she's so cute. And um, she reminds me of the storybook dolls by Nancy Ann that I've talked about on my channel. However, I don't think she is, and she's unmarked. She's just so sweet, and I couldn't pass her up. I'm not asking much, just $10, and that is number 19. All right, so thanks to uh, Barb JM, we had some research done and the cracker uh, tray or quacker, quacker tray uh, is called a cracker cradle by Fitz and Freud. And that item goes to Lori C, who evidently will put an entire flotilla of airplane, airplanes in the back of the cracker cradle or quacker tray. All right, next item I've got is a wall pocket. This actually happens to be one of the first pieces I ever picked up for resale. And it ended up in a box that got buried behind a couple other things. And as I've slowly gone through uh, my items and listing them on Etsy, opening up, uh, putting them in the new vintage booth that I just moved into last weekend uh, and selling on this uh, these sales, I actually unearthed <laughs> and unearthed it. I just found this was super attractive uh, when I originally picked it up. It is not marked. It does still have the raffia style hanger from when it, uh, somebody had originally hung it, but it just has this very attractive coloration. It's kind of a grayish brown uh, is the backing, the background color of the piece itself. It has the, the darker green tying kind of to make it look like a bag. It would look great with an air plant. It would look great just kind of hanging by itself uh, as a wall pocket, which is what it was originally designed uh, to be used for. So the vintage wall pocket is available for $6 and you can have it by giving me number 95. Number 95, $6 for the vintage wall pocket. All right, congratulations to Nicole North Garden. You are the winner of the Westmoreland Amber Glass Buggy Ashtray. Next up, we have more kitty cat action. So I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I think these are absolutely adorable. Um, so we have a kitty cat creamer. And this is a nice uh, sort of like a pink. I know it's kind of difficult to get that color. We have the kitty cat creamer and the kitty cat sugar bowl. And the head comes off right there. Um, so 
This one has a incy weensy flake on the tip of the cream or that the kitty cat is holding. And this little guy has a teeny little flake on the top of his ear. I don't know if you can see it. It's really tough. Um, but these are, believe it or not, actually made by Avon. But they are super, super cute. Uh, sugar and creamer kitty cat set. The sugar and creamer can be yours for the price of $10 if you give me number 69. Okay, so who got the last piece? I keep putting them aside and let's get organized. Um, the person who got the last piece, the Royal Dalton, was Fab Finds Fairy. So... I know you've got uh, one other item, so send your email and we'll get that all wrapped up. I wanted to show something a little more antique than some of the last things I've shown. So here is the other child's plate that I have this evening. I thought this one was really cute. They are three little boys, very cherubic looking. This is German. It's got the German mark on the back. We're not sure which company made it, but the mark looks a lot like Wheelock out of Germany. And these kids are having a lot of fun. Now, one of them is whipping the one pulling the cart, which seems a little extreme, but, uh, you know, I guess they didn't have a goat to pull that goat cart that day. So you just do what you have to do. It's called Wagoner. It's transferware. And it's got the little mark right there. This piece is $12 and it is number 44, $12 for the Wagoner, number 44. Okay, Gabrielle White, you are the winner of that sweet little doll. I know you're going to love her. The next item I have is this beautiful iridescent paperweight starfish. It's just a really nice piece of art glass. So pretty. It does not have any marks. I've looked at it through a jeweler's loop, didn't see anything. But I just thought for anybody that does beach, uh, this is just such a really pretty, substantially weighted piece. So. For this pretty iridescent, it's kind of like peachy pink. Let me see if I can. That, that doesn't help. It doesn't do it justice. Trust me, it's really, really pretty. So for that piece, I'm asking $15. And that is item number three. All right. And I can congratulate Ducky Jones for picking up the uh, vintage wall pocket. Uh, again, if you've watched uh, some of my videos before, I usually do an homage at some point to Jeffrey from Real Nifty Vintage because I basically cut my teeth on all of his videos and whether he knew it or not, he taught me everything I built uh, my resale business on. And one of the things he talked a lot about early days was Lefton. Now he has moved away from Lefton, uh, but I still have quite the inventory of it because it was fun to find because as part of the research, it's very, most of it is very clearly labeled. And so what I tended to focus on were the pieces that had the original foil labels, specifically this foil label, which is dated from 1953 to 1971. So this is a little cherub. Uh, he does not have wings. So um, he's not an angel. Pootie, I can't remember what the different things are, but you've got a naked child uh, sitting at the bottom of this footed compote. And it is clearly marked with the left in uh, original foil label, which again dates it from 1953 to 1971. I've had similar styles of this in the past. This one came out of my old antique booth uh, in Rockford. The booth I just moved into is Vintage Marketplace uh, Company in North Aurora, Illinois. Um, and I, it's a bigger booth. And so I didn't put as many smalls into it. So this came out of my old booth and came into a sale. So you can have the left in Footed compote for $6 by giving me number 86. $6, 86 for the little uh, Lefton compote. All right. So nobody bought the kitty creamer and sugar. If you decide you want it, it's number 69, $10. But next up, we have another piece of blue and white. Um, this is actually a piece of hand painted blue Delph, or some people say Delph blue. This is a egg-shaped trinket dish. Inside is nice. And as you can see on the bottom, 
it is hand painted Holland Blue Delph. And on the top, it has the classic windmill windmill scene. Um, there is a manufacturer flaw right here on the tippy top. Uh, you can tell that it's uh, manufactured because the blue paint is actually painted over top of that area. Um, but this is a really gorgeous hand-painted egg trinket dish made Delph Blue. And it can be yours for the price of $7 with the number 58. All righty. Let's see. Where are we here? I think that I am up for the next item. So this is the other Lamanazov cup and saucer. And on the one side, you've got that big funky flower. But the thing that's really cool about this is the firebird. Firebird is a part of Russian legend and lore. It's a fairy tale. I don't know the fairy tale personally, but I know that there's a lot of representations of it in Russian porcelains, Russian lacquer boxes. And for those who know Russian fairy tales, it's very significant. And so I think it's something I need to learn more about because I see these motifs and I think they're just crazy interesting. And look at the detail in the hand painting on this. Uh, it looks like it's uh, a lot of freehand there. And this one, again, has the USSR mark. It's going to be from the 1980s. It's a nice blue with the gilding. It's scarcely been used, if at all. So it's in perfect shape. And it is only $9, and it is number 36. So the Lamanaza Firebird Cup and Saucer, $9, number 36. Okay, Jean Draper, you are the winner of the Starfish. The next item I have is for all of you who love elephants. I have this gorgeous little elephant planner with the trunk that's up. It's got all these gorgeous jewel tones and skid. It has a lot of craziness on it, but it's crazy that looks so it's just beautiful. I love it. It's just the perfect amount. Um, I did put these faux succulents in there. You can take them out if you want. But I thought this is a really sweet, and that is made in Japan piece. So that sweet little plant planter with succulents in it that are not real. You can't go in. $14, and that is item 24. All right, and I can announce that number 86, the Lefton Planter, went to Michelle at Mermaid Cove, which is absolutely fitting because I cannot get through a sale without having to send something breakable to California. So Michelle, uh, enjoy the Lefton uh, footed combo. Uh, the next item is not breakable, so we'll see who picks this up, probably somebody down the street. Uh, this is a handkerchief, vintage handkerchief, probably from the 50s or 60s, relatively small. Uh, so it would not, it's not large enough to be a headscarf. Uh, so it's just it's a regular lady's handkerchief. It says Bon Voyage at the top. It's in pristine condition and never used because it actually still has the original foil label on it that it was from Lady Holiday. Uh, and it's manufactured, printed in Switzerland. Originally, this had been, uh, I posted this to sell in my Etsy shop because it has its original box. Unfortunately, when I had picked it up, they had used packing tape to tape, you know, the uber fragile uh, handkerchief to fall from falling out of the box. And the tape would not come out of the box. But I kept the box because if you look at it, it actually shows this was originally manufactured, originally sold in a, in a boutique in Cuba. And unfortunately, the fact that this had a Cuba relationship or relation means I couldn't sell it on Etsy and they delisted the item. I appealed it saying, but it didn't originate in Cuba. It originated in Switzerland and I can prove it it's still on the tag. It didn't matter. So instead of throwing the box away, which is what they suggested I do and sell it without the box, I decided to just keep it off of Etsy and sell it in a live sale. So you get the absolutely pristine Bon Voyage Swiss made uh, scarf with the Cuba uh, box that it was initially sold in. You get the handkerchief for $7 by giving me number 76. Number 76, $7 for the handkerchief and Cuban box. Quick update. 
Nicole Northgarden said she had to have the kitty. So the kitty sugar and creamer will be going to Nicole Northgarden. Congratulations. And then our good old friend Pamela Haynes picked up the Delft Blue egg-shaped trinket dish. So next up, we have another trinket box. Um, this is actually made by Stangle. So at one point in time, Stangle was insanely popular, highly sought after. Um, it's obviously doesn't have the same uh, flair that it used to, but this is just a really gorgeous design. Really inter interesting, as you can see all the way around. Uh, the name of this pattern on this piece of Stangle is Terra Rose. And you can see it has like the terracotta feel on the inside or look on the inside. It is glazed, as you can see that shininess. Um, it does have the marking on the bottom, Stangle Terra Rose. Um, and there is no issues except for a little bit of wear on that corner edge. It's just like a, I can feel it. You can't really see it as much as you can feel it, but it's a little... A little bit of wear on the uh, because it's a glazed on the top, so you can kind of feel where the glaze has gone away on that corner. Um, but this Stangle box Terra Rose pattern can be yours for the price of ten dollars with the number 65. Stangle is great stuff. Their old factory in Flemington, New Jersey, I believe is a big factory outlet center now, but it was a really good company that made great stuff. It's fun to see a piece. I don't run into it much anymore. Uh, the Lamanazov cup and saucer with the Firebird is going to Carolyn Gadles. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Carolyn, please email me and we'll get that out to you just as soon as I get back from my show this weekend. I'll be packing and shipping everything uh, Monday and Tuesday for you folks. If you reach out, I'll have it ready to go. In the meantime, I've got one more Hummel figurine that I wanted to show. This is Duet. It's cute because they're singing and we all would like to hear a little more singing these days. We'll get back to that soon, I'm sure. And here's the two boys. You see the back. The condition is great. No chips, no cracks. This is a different mark than the other one. This mark is going to be from about the early 1970s with the stylized B. That's a little B in the middle there. And... This piece, again, is going to be just $15, and it is number 27. The Hummel Duet for $15, number 27. Randy Heilman, the elephant is yours. So I hope you enjoy. Um, before I show you my next item, I wanted to show you one last time. This is a set of three little pig nesting dolls hand painted in Poland. I showed this in the first round. They're so cute. It has a medium pig and a tiny pig. And I am selling these for $16 and it's number seven if anybody's interested. They're so cute. The next thing I want to show you I think is absolutely hilarious. If you know somebody that's getting made I, this I know weddings and everything are kind of crazy these days. I don't know if you've seen these before. This is a bank and this sh it shows a couple before. It is a little chippy. I think that not when I say chippy, just paint flaking. There's no chips or cracks or anything in it. So you've got the cute little couple before and then you turn them around and they're fat and bald and wrinkled. They're just a hot mess. And I can relate. And that's the after. And because, you know, this makes so much sense, if you want to deposit coins, you deposit them into her bosom. I mean, really? <laughs> so I love this. And I know there's somebody out there that just has to have this too. So it is $12. Oh, it's our story, I believe. It's made in Japan. And it's uh, $12. And it's item number 20. All right. Uh, number 76, the uh, uh, Swiss handkerchief with the Cuban box uh, went to Brooke Lagan. So congratulations, Brooke. Uh, this is, uh, we're going to be going into the last last round, I guess. We'll each have one item left. And then so for all the sellers, if there's anything that hasn't sold, although I think we've done pretty well in the sale, 
uh, this last round, it'd be the last chance to highlight something that maybe didn't sell. And hopefully we'll finish right at the two hour mark. So appreciate all of you that have joined uh, joined us so far. Uh, so I'm the I'm, this is the last piece from the previous round and then we each will have, uh, so there'll be four more items coming up. George uh, earlier had a piece of Lennox and I also happen to have a piece of Lennox in uh, my sale as well. I feel that Lennox gets somewhat of a bad rap. Uh, I think Lennox is absolutely beautiful. It's extremely high quality American porcelain. Uh, for, I don't know why it's not as desirable. Uh, this piece I thought was a little different looking from typical Lennox because it actually had a colored design. A lot of times you just see the cream base with the gold trim. This one has pink carnations uh, printed onto it. And I didn't know that this was a thing. They actually, if you can see the under the, the uh, marking, it's marked carnation, simple enough. But if you see at the very bottom, this was a, a limited edition Mother's Day piece from 1987. I did not know they did Mother's Day pieces. So this is a bud vase uh, with a carnations design from Lennox. It's available for $6 by giving me number 93. Number 93, $6 for the Lennox vase. All right. So the... Stangle Tara Rose Trinket Box went to our good friend Pamela Haynes. So congratulations. Um, Mod Dukes, if you guys don't know my videos, Mod Dukes, my mom, we call her Mod Dukes. She's in a lot of my videos. Uh, she said she actually got one of those wedding things for a gift for her wedding. So that's pretty funny. Um, so just in case the first thing uh, did not go, if anybody's interested in the nursery box planter, uh, it is Napco. That is $10 and the number is 59. So our last item is going to be this bisque, Mary and sleeping baby Jesus with the lamb. And it is for a tea light candle and it is a nice bisque and it is made by Jasco and it's done for Lovekin friends from 1979. If you guys can see that, well, let me turn it around so you can read it better. There you go. So this is a nice, cute little tea light candle holder. And that can be yours for the price of $9 with the number 71. All right. Well, we've got one last thing to go, but I wanted to tell the person who got the last item, which, boy, am I getting myself lost here? Well, somebody got the last item. So let me think for one moment. Ah, yes, the Hummel do it. Okay. AJ's retro and vintage. There we go. I'm awake again. Uh, AJ, uh, please get in touch with me. You're getting the Hummel duet. And my last item, I'm going to show you something I didn't show you before, just because I've got uh, one of these. And She's very sweet. This is another Lennox figurine, but this is the bisque porcelain with the hand painting as opposed to the gloss. And a lot of people like the bisque. Uh, a lot of folks these days are taking care of grandkids. And this is very sweet because you've got the mother and child. She looks like a Gibson girl. This is about 30 years old. It's called Cherished Moment. There we go. And I just think she's very sweet. And if you think she's very sweet too, she's priced very well at only $20 and she's number 28. So the Lennox cherished moment is 28 and it's $20. Okay, I have two items I wanna show again. It's this Crowley doll, the Lorcan doll from 1950s Ireland. It is item 16 and that is $36. He's really sweet. They're highly collectible. I wish I could be better on the price. And then one more thing was beautiful made in Japan vase. And that was item number 25 for $12. So my last item is a Christmas item and it's very party item. Um, in Mexico, tequila decanters are very highly collectible and they have some amazing patterns. And I have a Santa tequila bottle. No tequila is in it, 
but check, I have the plastic on his head so his head doesn't pop off in shipping. There's not anything wrong with him. He just needs a tiny bit of cleaning when you get that plastic off. But look at all the details from 1977. Um, happy holidays. And I just think he's so detailed for a tequila bottle. His head comes off. Isn't that crazy? Um, they sell for over a hundred dollars easily. There's um, some that are on um, little uh, donkeys and things, and it's pretty crazy. So this one is going to be twenty eight dollars, and it is going to be item nine. All right, and I can announce that ninety three the Lennox vase went to Lynn Johnson. So before I show my last item, I'll just show one more time. Uh, the only item I had that did not sell was the set of uh, ceramic um, napkin rings with the apple designs to them in perfect condition, no chips, no cracks, hand painted with apples on both sides. Those were number 84 and they were only $5. So if you're interested in the napkin rings, you can pick those up number 84 for $5. But my last item is an uh, item that I am trying to learn a little bit more about. I tend to focus a little bit more on European porcelain, but I love the idea uh, behind Nippon uh, porcelain. And it is, uh, this is a signed piece of saying hand painted Nippon. So that dates this to be over hundred years old. I love this bowl in the, because it was in such fantastic shape around the edges. All of that trim work is the moriage, the raised slipware. So it's actually dimensional. You can feel it as you rub it across. It's in absolutely pristine condition. There's a little bit, as you get close to the top, you can kind of see there's a little bit of wear right near the edge. Because I do believe that this was designed to be a, you know, a small rice bowl or it's actually a functional food service bowl. So you've got a little bit of wear that happened right along the top. Uh, but it's in absolutely great condition. It's a very attractive design uh, with the background gold as well as the raised gold going above it. And that is available for $8 by giving me number 87. So $8, number 87 gives me the gives you the Nippon Bowl. And that brings us to a close. We're at 8.57. So we are we hit basically right at the two hour mark, which is what my absolute max had been. We all got through 20 items, which is also really great. So appreciate uh, the, uh, let's see, 147 of you that are sticking with us right to the end. So we've got, uh, I think I have a, one more slide that I can show. This is everybody's. If you got any items this evening, please send an email to the appropriate seller. Uh, email addresses are scrolling across the bottom. Uh, what we you need to send us your the email address you would like us to use to send the invoice. So if you have a specific uh, PayPal invoice uh, email, make sure you use that. Please include your YouTube name in addition to your actual name. Some of you have gotten very creative in your naming, and it's like a game for us to try and match who is who. So mm -hmm. please give us that. And then most importantly, though, is giving us our shipping your shipping information. Uh, particularly if you've never bought from any of us, be, one of us before, please make sure you send that because without that, we don't have a way of contacting you. Because uh, even though we can see your comments, we can't click on you or get any information. You have to contact us. So please send an email with your shipping address. We will turn around invoices as quickly as we can. George mentioned that he is doing shows this weekend. So most of his work will actually be at the, the top of uh, beginning of next week. I will try and get invoices typically by uh, the end of the day on Saturday. So you'll have something by Sunday morning. Um, but all of us are doing this on our own. Uh, Tim's somewhat of a machine on six different platforms. <laughs> that keeps him pretty busy. So uh, we, we will definitely try and get back to you. But if you don't hear from us right away, do not fret. Uh, but I, in most cases, ex except for George, give him a couple extra days. If you haven't heard from us by Sunday, it's probably in your spam folder or there might be a problem or if what you sent us might've been in our spam folders. So work with us. We appreciate you being with us. This is a lot of fun for us, but I'll be honest, it's also a lot of work. So I appreciate all of you being with us. I uh, appreciate all of this purchasing that you've done. We really literally cannot do this without you. So thank you so much. I hope Tim had a great time in his first sale. Yeah. And, no, this uh, was so much fun. Like I, I think I'm I'm ready to, to, to do another one. So I'll keep excellent. everybody. We didn't scare him off. Your start. That's great. <laughs> we're, we're about to find a slot in the calendar for Tim now. Uh, at some point, we're going to start having sales at three o'clock in the morning. But you know, <laughs> whatever works. 
Uh, but definitely watch. It's typically going to show up on our Instagram pages, some of our YouTube pages. You'll be able to find those calendars that are floating around. For things that are coming up, uh, George does uh, premiere releases every Wednesday. And so there are uh, pre-recorded videos that he does. They are not sales pre-recorded videos, but he does a live chat as part of them. So those are a lot of fun on Wednesdays. Tim does them on Mondays. I think Tim's are at 6 p.m. Eastern. And yeah, 6 p.m. Eastern on and, Monday live show. And George's live premieres are on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, um, and actually, to be honest, I'm going to do Monday after Tim at 7 as well. I'm going to do two a week for a while oh. and see how that goes. Excellent, fun. So you got to look at look forward to that. I don't think uh, Kelly has got locked into a schedule yet, but she's putting out some great content and some great videos. Definitely watch for that. Uh, as for myself, I've got the next uh, deep dive is coming up in uh, a week and a half, so that will be on Sunday, July twenty sixth. I didn't see if she was in the chat tonight, but Laura Bemos. So anyone who's been in the chat before, Laura Bemos is actually going to be live on camera. God help me doing a deep dive on her collection of vintage dominoes. Hey, so Patrick, I just want to interrupt you for a minute and let you know that you hit 800 subscribers tonight. Yay! Thank you. I, I, I hate to beg for subscribers, but it was one of those days we were so close to 800 going into it. Uh, so yes, I, I, want me, small, me, so. <laughs> I wanted the smaller channels. And so appreciate all the support you're giving to us. Watch my deep dives that I've already done. Uh, again, Kelly will be doing a deep dive the second Sunday in August. And you can go backwards into my files and see uh, George's deep dive on cameras and Tim's deep dive on uranium glass. My videos are, or my live sales are always on Thursday, the same time, seven, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern. Next week will be my jewelry sale. And then uh, we'll have another four person sale next week, or I'm sorry, next month. And uh, Fatbird Finds will return uh, to the live sale the group sale uh, in August, as will Vintage Vinny will return to live sale world uh, for my four person sale. And then I'm still trying to find a premiere. I've got two invitations out to somebody to do their very first live sale at my August uh, joint sale. So hopefully I can keep that tradition going, kickstarting somebody into doing their live sales going forward. So once again, thank you all so much. Thank you to Tim, George and Kelly for joining me. Really appreciate it. And thank you all for putting your trust in Trusty Huckster. Have a good night. Bye-bye.